keep it going for everybody you've seen so far tonight. Let's hear it for him. Uh, yeah, this is fun. This is a cool little uh, spot. Uh, and, you know, we're having a good time. Like Anthony, he's a good buddy of mine. Never let me borrow his Lion Queen DVD, though. <laughs> How are you guys doing with this? Good? Married? No. Uh, dating? Okay, how long? Two years today. Two years today? Woo! Nice! Where'd you guys meet? What's that? Hinge, nice! That's all we're gonna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys love love over here. You're like, yeah, Hinge, yeah, it's great. Okay, that's awesome. What, uh. You guys live together yet or anything? Or? Nah, that's the secret. That's the best. <laughs> live with people's the worst. I know there's people in here that live together and like, yeah! I hate that shit. Did you get abandoned? Yeah. Who, was, who are you with? A boy or a lady friend? Lady friend. Lady friend. Cool. Did you live with her? We did before. We, you did before and you, you don't anymore because it sucks, right? <laughs> Myself. It fucking rules. This is the best. I love it. My kids are all grown up. I got my own place. It's good. It's good. Good way to be. Oh, I'm. I, I don't know what. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about me. Get back here. Sit down. Yeah. Yes, sir. Ooh. <laughs> you guys used to live together? We did. We yeah. make out. Yeah. You guys make out? Okay. I didn't ask that. Friend. Your best friends, but some you, you have made out though. No. Well, then why'd you say that? You said you, you asked if I was her lady friend. Is what she just told me. <laughs> well, that, well, listen to me, not her. <laughs> There's a reason you moved out. There, the, you can't trust her. You told her. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> insurance beneficiary we're like tight oh yeah yeah, yeah. damn all right it's also because i my mom sucks and so your mom's okay you are an overshare just like, <laughs> nobody needed to know all this stuff like, like and you're not even drinking you're drinking coke right now and you're just like yeah my mom sucks but i'm on her life insurance policy i'm thinking about getting another cat i don't know Oh, you just got a cat for your dog? <laughs> Is that how it works? <laughs> like, oh, my dog's lonely, so I need to get a cat that will be mean to it. <laughs> oh, that's really dope. What's the cat's name? Zara. Zara? Not after the store. Not, Not after the store? Did you think I was going to be like, oh, Zara, like after the store? <laughs> yeah. I'll like, I look like a guy that knows about Zara the store. Not that I just found out that Zara's a store. <laughs> no, I know that Zara's a store. I got a lot of ex-girlfriends. Uh, <laughs> can we go to Zara? I'm like, you can go to Zara. I'm going to go to Foot Locker. Uh, I'll buy shoes. I, I, yeah, I have a lot of shoes. And like, I, I wear a lot of different like Nikes and, and Jordans and stuff like that. And people are like, yeah. They're like, oh, Bill, you think you're cool because you like Jordans? With, like, you got a lot, a lot of black friends or something? Like, no. I got fat white daughters. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, you like didn't want to laugh, but you laughed. <laughs> What's We're two brown girls. Yeah. That grew up in Strongsville. You two brown girls that grew up in Strongsville. Okay. A lot of white fat. I, I have fat white. I have fat white daughters that Go date black guys. Yeah. So like, they're adults now, so it's okay. Like, they're, they're fucking, it's fine. You guys are the only ones that are weird about it. Just made me step on my shoe game a little bit. I just, like, Anyway, that's how I met Pope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you guys grew up in Strongsville? I grew I lived in Strongsville when I was a kid for a little bit. What ele, what an elementary school did you go to? It's probably better for you than us. Um, yeah. <laughs> but not necessarily, like you don't know. Like I I was in the Boy Scouts, things happened, like <laughs> What's that? Pinsir? 
What? Kinsner. Kinsner was your elementary school. I went to Sarar Elementary School. Sarar. Yeah. Sarar. Sarar. <laughs> Did you have a stroke? <laughs> no, but all the kids in school. No, that's Sarar. Yeah, they'd always say that. Oh, nice. And what do you do? What, what's your name, by the way? Ridley. What? Yeah, that's what everybody in. I know. It, well, yeah, it's because I am. Sucked. Yeah, yeah. I'm from. You're white. Yeah. I, I went. <laughs> but I'm. I'm gonna explain the levels of white. We went from Berea to Strongsville to Medina. So like, that's a fucking oh. level of white. Calm down. <laughs> My daughters date the blacks. It's fine. <laughs> Say your name one more time. Rithy. Rithy, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's a cute name. I like that. Thanks. And then your name is? Tahani. Tahani. Yes. Yeah, I love that. Putting that on the, that sauce. <laughs> Tahini. Yeah, well, that's, that was the joke I already kind of made. Uh, <laughs> all right, let me tell you a little bit about me, though. I appreciate you guys. You're, you're very nice. Uh, my name is Bill. I'm from Medina. I grew up Mormon, and whenever people found out that I was Mormon as a kid, they'd always tease me. Go, like, oh, Bill, you're Mormon. How many wives do you have? And that hurt my feelings, and I'd start to cry and run home to my mom's. <laughs> I really was more. I served a Mormon mission for two years in the Philippines, and while I was there, I learned a language that's not very helpful to me anymore. It's, it's Tagalog, and when I read it on a piece of paper, I'm like, ooh, that's a Girl Scout cookie. This place is gonna be delicious. And it was, for different reasons, which I'll get to in a minute. <laughs> But I was brand new in the country and I'm walking down the street one day and this guy pulled a knife on me and it wasn't scary, he was Filipino, he was like this big. <laughs> and I kinda had this badass moment where I grabbed the knife out of his hand and I threw him on the ground and I yelled at him and I wanted to say something intimidating like, get away from me, you scumbag. But I didn't know the language that well, so instead I said, mahal talaga mga sagin na ito. Which basically means, these bananas are too expensive. <laughs> I still said it a badass way, that was just the most aggressive phrase that I knew at the time. He got the point, he was terrified. So I did the mission thing to make my parents happy and I was miserable because Mormons are strict, but when you're a missionary, they're extra strict. You can't watch TV, you can't listen to music, you can't go see movies, and I started to break those rules by drinking alcohol and going to strip clubs. Yeah, yeah and strip clubs in the Philippines are real fun. <laughs> Because they're more like whorehouses. So, yeah, so the first, yeah, yeah. Did you work? What? <laughs> Have you been? That's where you met? <laughs> Take that, Hinge. <laughs> so I, the first time I go to one, it's me and two other missionaries that I corrupted. And, <laughs> and we get in there and we're the only Americans in the whole place and all the girls are trying their best to get her attention, to get us to spend money. One girl comes out, takes off all her clothes, takes a piece of ice out of the bucket, rubs it on her vagina, and then dropped it into my beer. Yeah. So I accidentally spilled that on purpose because <laughs> you're not even supposed to drink the water over here. So night, as the night goes on, there's more and more girls flirting with us, doing the like classic stripper flirty stuff. They're like, oh my god, you're so cute. Oh my god, you're so funny. Oh my god, have you ever seen 90 Day Fiance? <laughs> and I'm ignoring those girls. I don't like them because I know what they're after. I like the girl that was straightforward and she was kind of tired and she's just like, all right, here's the deal. For 1,500 pesos, I'll take you to the back room. You can do anything you want. 1,500 pesos at that time was like $30 American. That's a really good deal. <laughs> right? Like, if you don't think about paying for sex, which you seem to, or getting paid for it, whatever it is, like, that's, those bananas were not too expensive. <laughs> 
It's like getting a group on, all right? That's a... So as the night goes on, uh, she keeps trying to get me to spend money on her and to invite me to the back room, and I keep turning her down because the back room is a scary place to go. That's a sketchy place to go, and I keep saying no, and as I keep saying no, she keeps lowering her prices and her standards until she finally gets to a point where she's like, all right, if you buy me a beer, I'll go down on you right here at this table. So she's sucking my dick in front of my two missionary friends. I'm sorry, that's just how the story goes. And my two missionary friends are looking at each other like, oh my god, we had no idea that Bill was so hardcore, except they, they didn't call me Bill, they called me Elder Squire, because rules are rules. <laughs> Long story short, I hooked up with a whole bunch of Filipinas, got caught, was excommunicated from the Mormon church, and may or may not have between like one and 15 illegitimate children over there. <laughs> and chances are they made some of the clothes we're wearing tonight. <laughs> You, they're my kids, they're gonna work, all right? <laughs> we're not gonna be lazy and spoiled like America gets, oh, I want an iPhone, make it. <laughs> you guys handled that well, I appreciate it. Uh, it's weird being Mormon, because people have a lot of questions about when, or like when I was Mormon, they're like, oh, did you do this, did you do that? The one that comes up most frequently now is about soaking. Yeah. Yes. Now, soaking, if you don't know what it is, you know, and it's ridiculous. If you don't know what soaking is, soaking is something that, uh, it's like a, a loophole for trying to have sex without having sex. So the idea is that a guy puts his thing in a girl, and then he doesn't move, but he has friends jump on the bed. <laughs> So he's technically not having sex, it's just happening. And it's a stupid thing, nobody actually does it. And also, I don't have friends that are that good. <laughs> like none of my friends would do that for me. Like if my friends were in that situation, they'd just be like, you know, I'll just move and you can fuck me instead. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's very excited about the soaking over there. <laughs> Another thing people, you know, the, 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 there's a lot of misunderstandings about the Mormon church, and I'm not here to defend it. I'm just here to clear some things up. It is a Christian church. It's actually called the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It was started by a guy named Joseph Smith in Palmyra, New York in the 1800s, like 1820-ish time. Uh, he was a failed magician. He's like, ah, I guess religion's the way to go. Uh, it's basically like the 1800s Joel Osteen. And, uh, <laughs> He was a con man. He, he, he created this church. He created a, a book, like a companion to the Bible called the Book of Mormon, which is basically just like a straight to DVD sequel of the book of the Bible, where it's like kind of the same characters, but they couldn't get like the main guy to come back. <laughs> right? Like, you can, like, the, like those weird, like, see, you know, you, you know those sequels are, it's like the Crow 2. You're like, well, they couldn't get him to come back for me, so that's a little thing. Some of you are young, you're like, why not? <laughs> Something happened on the set. <laughs> anyway, the point is, it's, it is a scam, and he, he basically said that he was talking with God, and God's like, oh, we got to restore Jesus' true gospel here, and one of the things he really wants me to do is marry a bunch of 14-year-old girls. <laughs> And my parents still believe in this shit, and it drives me crazy every day. Like, every day, that like I, they, they're good people, but they believe dumb shit, and it makes me nuts, because like I, you can't talk some, like, anything you say against the church, they're like, oh, that's just the devil trying to stop the word of the Lord. I'm like, I think he was a pedophile. <laughs> like it and they're like Phew, you're real satany right now <laughs> so we don't get along that great but we try we like just don't talk about religion and uh, my parents have been together a long time and they're not gonna change their ways they're like too deep in 
They can't. And like they've been married for 47 years and people will think that's supposed to be a successful marriage. But it's not. It's a hostage situation. Because <laughs> my mom can't leave. She doesn't know how to do anything without my dad. My dad definitely won't let her go because he is inept uh, <laughs> as an adult. But he thinks he's like really good at everything. And like, do laundry. He's like, oh no, not doing that. <laughs> like, all my mother talks about is how excited she is for my dad to die. Like, honestly, that's what she talks about. This summer, she goes, hey, when your dad dies, can we go to a baseball game? I was like, we can just go to a baseball game. And she's like, yeah, but it'd mean more to me if he was dead. Right? That's, that's not a successful marriage. That's just two people running out the clock. Like, that's... And now my mom tries to hang out with me and my sister because we don't go to church anymore, and she likes to misbehave with us, but she doesn't know how to misbehave. She's like a homeschooled kid that's going to senior year of high school. Just like, hey, you guys want to come over to my house after school? We'll do some mazes and maybe make some pudding. Like, no, that's not what high school kids do. Like, what? That's what we did in my house, and we had a good time doing it. Well, great, my little sister's math homework. It's, it's going to be fun. It's like, well, we're not going to your house. We're going. That's how my mom tries to misbehave. She doesn't know how to do it. And then she takes it too far. Because we were all hanging out, me, my sister, my mom. We hear this news story about a guy that put a camera in a bathroom so he could film women going to the bathroom. And we're all disgusted. I was like, that's gross. And my sister's like, yeah, i got to be careful when I go to the bathroom, make sure I look for cameras so that doesn't happen to me. And my mom wants to get on the action. She knows my dad's not around. She's like, yeah, that guy must have really wanted to see those ladies' cunts. Whoa! <laughs> swear. I never heard my mom say crap. I never heard my mom say damn. And then she comes out of the gate with a hard C describing a vagina, not using it the way most people use it, like an Irish person that's like cheeky, like ah, you cunt, like that, like that's, that I'm ready for in that scenario. But to have my mom call, I've never heard anybody call the thing that. And so I was like, Mom, don't swear. <laughs> and she's like, oh, you're being a real pussy right now. <laughs> so when my dad dies, my mom's going to be real cool. <laughs> I'm excited for it. There's also a part of me that thinks they use that word in the bedroom, and I'm not going there. But it's just, it's rattling around in my brain, because why else would she use that word? And that, that's the only thing that I can think of, and, and her just being like, come on, Jim, get in the, and I'm like, nope, no, I can't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that, Sue. <laughs> yeah, that's her name, Sue. <laughs> she likes when Jim fucks her cunt. <laughs> If I have to have it in my brain, I have to put it in your brains too. After the show, if you want, I'll show you a picture of them. <laughs> Just to make it that much more real and disturbing. Because I, that's a new bit and I did it, I don't like it. I went too far. I, yeah. It's so good, I know, but, but it's like therapy now. It's like it hurts. <laughs> All right. Whew. Anybody else here grow up, grow up religious? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I don't. I don't have time. <laughs> I'm sure you did, but like I gotta learn too much, and it's just. Was it Hindu or? Yeah. Cult. Cult. You you Hindu has even got cult like, status. I mean, it's like how Jesus has cults. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. Hey. <laughs> I like us. <laughs> So over there had some religious parents over there? Who, who, who was, put their hand up over there? It was Julia. Oh, Julia? <laughs> you, you know, I already, I already know all your demons. Uh, you think you're an overshare, Julia. Good God. 
I've known her for two years and have had to help her get new social security cards twice. <laughs> She is not a great adult. Like she's, Don't talk about Julia like that. I can't talk about Julia that, like that because she's my. She she's like my. Yeah. I owe him like three hundred dollars. He can say whatever. <laughs> you don't owe me. I, I keep telling you, you don't have to pay me back. Just, just please leave me alone. <laughs> Stop call, trying to FaceTime me at 2 a.m. and be like, hey, are you up? I need a ride. <laughs> <laughs> on a Tuesday. Like, on a Tuesday, she does that shit to me. I don't, if I'm up, I give her a ride. Like, I do. I, fucking, I love Julia. She's like one of my dumb kids. Uh, my kids are dumb. I have three kids. Uh, they're actually my ex-wife's kids from her first marriage, but I've raised them like they're my own. I've taken care of them, I provide them, they're all adults now, which is nice, because now, uh, yeah, thank you, one person that's like, kind of clapping, yeah! That's right, I am my hero! I just, I just loved kids, or, ah, that's not good, that's not good. I love three, no, there's no good way to say that. I was just, I was good to those, I'm a good stepdad. Yeah, it's, it's a low bar. It's a low bar to be a good stepdad. You're like, oh, what makes you a good stepdad? I didn't molest her. It's like, ah, oh, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> Love those kids, though. They're all grown up now. And uh, that's nice because when they were teenagers, they were so mean. My oldest, my oldest daughter, one time when, when uh, she was a teenager, she said to me, I hate you, and I've always hated you. Now, in her defense, I did ask her to refill the Brita pitcher. <laughs> so I probably had it coming. <laughs> that 17 seconds of her life, she'll never get back. And she uses her time so wisely. <laughs> when she said that, I had been around long enough that I didn't, I didn't even hear, I hate you, and I always hate you. I knew her well enough that what I heard when she said that was, I'm 17 years old, and I don't understand why my dad my biological father is not a part of my life. It makes me sad, it makes me angry, I get emotional, and I lash out at people, but I don't mean it, and I'm sorry. But I do appreciate that you're taking time out of your life to care for me, love me, provide for me, and be a role model for me. And I fucking hate you. Because she's a teenager, and she should hate you a little bit. If you're a good parent, and you have a teenage kid, they should hate you a little bit. Like, there's nothing worse than people that are like, oh, this is my kid, and she's a teenager, but we're best friends. I'm like, oh, that's not a good thing. <laughs> that means you guys are like four years away from having a joint OnlyFans account. <laughs> but I didn't subscribe, I just know about it. <laughs> You're doing a good job. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> I, 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 I agree. <laughs> I also have a dog. I have a. I bought a dog. People get mad at me for that. Like, you shouldn't buy dogs. You should adopt dogs. But they don't understand my situation. I live in a condo, so I need a small dog that's hypoallergenic, that's not going to shed. Blah, blah, blah. Those are my excuses. But what it comes down to is, I have rescue kids. I can buy a dog. <laughs> Five? More. Oh, okay. Perfect. Well, if you guys like this, I got specials on YouTube. Uh, they're free to watch. And uh, like one of them's got over 110,000 views on it, and the other ones are also up there. So uh, <laughs> the other ones are on like 50,000. You just go to my YouTube channel, YouTube, just search Bill Squire. Uh, the latest one was called Pure BS. I just filmed one at the Agora. Uh, a few months ago, and I'm really excited about that one. That that one will be out later this year. We're trying to sell it to like a streaming service, uh, but we I don't know how that's gonna go because I'm in Cleveland, so. <laughs> but you know, it, it, whatever. If, if it goes up on YouTube, if you it buy a round, we can make it better. If I get, buy a round, uh, well, okay, I'm not doing that well, sir. Uh, <laughs> I am Cleveland famous. That means I get free Mr. Hero sometimes. <laughs> That is not uh, buy everybody in here around money. That is, uh, I have a lease with an 8% interest. Like that's, <laughs> that's how I do. <laughs>
Uh, and after the show, I do have uh, some merchandise. I got these magnets. Uh, I think Gabe mentioned the Hell is Real billboard. I have a um, play on that. It says Bill is Real, uh, and it's got the red, it's yeah. a red B instead of a red H. And so I'll be selling those after the show. I can take credit cards or cash or Venmo or uh, What's the one? The cash app or pay, pay whatever you have. And uh, pay whatever you want for them. Don't be a dick though. Don't be like, here's a quarter. Enjoy your shopping cart at Aldi. <laughs> Get some bear claws. <laughs> uh, all right, let's wrap this up though. Keep it going for all the other comics you saw. And for. There's an unsung. A uh, couple of unsung heroes behind this, uh, Connor Balderson and uh, Grace Dwyer, they, they, yeah. This is like a national franchise and they're running it here. They're not comedians, they're just people that love comedy and produce shows and they've done a great job and so make sure you keep supporting this because they're bringing people from all over Cleveland but also all over the country to do these shows and it's a great way to like for local talent and, and up and coming talent to get in front of crowds uh, and, and kind of show what they can do. And so keep it going for those two. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. How are we gonna do it? I got it. All right. I uh, I, I remember when Caitlyn Jenner came out. And people had a lot of opinions. And here's the thing. The one that I thought was the weirdest were when people got mad that Caitlyn Jenner was being called a hero by people. Like, Caitlyn Jenner's not a hero. Yeah. Caitlyn Jenner's not a hero. Caitlyn Jenner. No, Caitlyn Jenner's a hero. And I love that Caitlyn Jenner's a hero. Because I've always wanted to be a hero. But you used to have to do so much. <laughs> Caitlin helped drop that bar. <laughs> I don't want to go out there and fight for your lives. I don't got to go and put my life on the line for somebody else to be a hero. Now, what I got to do to be a hero is tell everybody a secret. Well, I got lots of those. <laughs> so here we go. I've touched two dicks. <laughs> one of them was mine. The other one, here's what happened. <laughs> I was having sex with this girl, and uh, we're having some drinks, and uh, there's another guy that was also having sex with that girl. Like, good old-fashioned devil's threesome. It wasn't like, like an episode of Scooby-Doo where she's running back and forth between the rooms. <laughs> <laughs> or like that classic sitcom trope where she had to be at like a birthday party and a wedding, but they're in the same hotel, so she kept changing outfits and being like, oh, I've been here the whole time. No, it was just good old fashioned devil three so we're all drunk we're all having some sex and at one point during the sex the girl took my hand and put it on the other guy's thing and do you guys know what muscle memory is <laughs> because every time i touched the dick it's been mine so like as soon as my hand was on it it's just like aha I kind of realized what was happening. I was like, oh, that's in a weird, that's not mine. Okay. Uh, but I don't want to be rude and just be like, ew. Uh, so I just like slowly drop fingers off. <laughs> to let them know like, we are done here. A little countdown. And then I was like, okay, let's go back to focusing on this young lady. And also let's not be Facebook friends anymore. <laughs> And then a few days later, I was drunk again, having sex with a different girl. I actually do pretty well with women because I'm uh, on the radio here and girls were like, oh, you're on the radio? I'm like, yeah, they're like, neat. And then, uh, and that's a really easy person to sleep with, I'm gonna be honest. If you're a girl that's impressed by somebody that's on the radio in 2024, like that's like, like, like they, they show up and they'll be like, oh, you're on the radio and you have doors on your car? Where are we going to dinner, Mr. President? <laughs> so a few days later, I'm drinking again, having sex with this different girl. And we're, it's going good, but like I'm kind of drunk this time. So I'm like, I'm climbing the mountain, but I couldn't yodel, if that makes sense. <laughs> 
like everything's going in and out, but like I just couldn't finish. And she started talking, and she's like, are you gonna come? And I was like, yeah, but I want you to come first. And she's like, I already did a bunch of times. And I'm like, well, yeah, I'm gonna lie. <laughs> And then uh, she's like, you better come. I'm like, wow, why'd you get me? And she's like, do you think I'm ugly? I'm like, no, I think you're super hot. I'm just kind of drunk and I can't really come right now, but it's, I'm having a good time. So just relax and it'll happen. And she's like, I want you to come. And I'm like, stop yelling at me. I don't like it, but we're still having sex the whole time. It just, and then she keeps going. She's like, you better come, you better come. And I'm like, I'm not gonna now because you're making me feel weird. And then like we're going back each other and for whatever because the reason I was drunk and I thought about the other day when I touched that guy's dick and I came and I don't know what that means but it feels good to be a hero